Hello. Today I'm designing and building a wooden mechanical clock to tell time. What kind? The gravity power ticking kind. More technically, an anchor escapement. An escapement is a mechanical device that will make movements, stopping and going, in regular intervals. There's a ton of ways to do this. Sort of a who's who of mechanical systems exists. I'll choose one arbitrarily. As a goal, I'd like the clock to run for at least a couple minutes. And I'd like to try and design as much of it myself for fun. For fun. For fun. For fun. To make this rotate at regular intervals, we need to use something to lock its movement periodically. Something like this lever arm that blocks the wheel from turning unless lifted. If we make this swing with a weight, it becomes a pendulum that moves at a constant rate, which then lets the wheel turn at a constant rate. It's a clock. Okay, this should be easy. I design a ratchet wheel and winch, aluminum tubes as bearings, add some string and dowels, and cut out a lever arm to turn this into an escapement, and... Okay, so it's terrible. It barely runs, there's too much friction, the wheels don't stay centered, the string gets jammed, the lever arm gets stuck, or it swings loose. On the plus side, I know what not to do now. Back to the drawing board. Okay, we need a design that is more forgiving of construction tolerances. Less friction, more rigid, run longer, and actually tell time in seconds. Hey, this Galileo design doesn't need such precise teeth or levers. That should work. For the larger gear, we could use pegs instead of teeth. That should be a lot easier to construct. Let's try and design that too. We could also use the pendulum swing and the gear ratio to get one of the wheels ticking every second. That should look nice and actually make this into a clock. After finishing the CAD design, I start with the plywood gears. I'll make 5, 10, and 15 tooth gears by sticking on a printout of the design onto the plywood and then drilling in between the teeth for the main contact points of the gears. After that, I need to cut the rest of the gear into a circle using a precision router table and do an extremely sketchy cut, spinning the gear around its axis with the router. I do the same process for the 5 tooth gear. I strongly recommend you use more safety precautions than I did here, but thankfully, the scale of the system was small enough that this worked alright. I try out some brass rods with some match fit bearings that work the best. Look how well they spin. Then the escapement gear. I cut the plywood into a large circle, try not to lose any fingers while cutting it round. Then I drill a series of holes and insert nails that will become the pegs. This was so much easier to make than the gears. Oh. This runs pretty well. Now we need the locking lever, or pallet arm. Let's take a block of wood and chisel out a slot to hold the lock. I don't really need to do this, but it just looks kind of nice. All the pieces are together. I can adjust the position of the weight on the lever up and down to change its swing rate until the second hand matches one second. And now for the fun part. We just need to wind it up and the clock starts to tick. This is so cool. This was such a journey. I'm glad we're able to see it running finally. I wonder how long it'll run for. I'll wind it up and run a digital timer next to it. Wow. 33 minutes. This is awesome. That's basically a clock. Thinking about the previous design, all those improvements that came with the second design, the rigidity, the lower friction, the gear reduction, all of this came together to make such a lovely little device. What a good time this project was. It teaches some fun lessons about mechanical systems. It has such a pleasing motion and sound, and it's useful too. Well, thanks for watching. See you next time.